very lucky on my uh, booster pack openings. I ended up joining a bunch of sealed, sealed drafts. Just opening the packs and rejoining. And I opened two, two Satoros, and I was able to buy two more from GoatBots. So, this is, like, the fastest I've ever been able to get, like, the biggest chase rare of the set. Uh... <laughs> By myself without any help. Uh, this is the fastest by a lot. <laughs> uh, I don't have a, a cowboy hat on, but Esther has found her. There's our, a snake in my boot. <laughs> our one cowboy hat. Um, you darn tootin'. Why aren't you talking like this? I don't understand. I don't mean to, I can't flex on the chatters as, with my uh, country accent. Flex on them haters. <laughs> Um, we're starting with Satoro in this kind of Esper Stoneblade Persist deck that is kind of weird. Satoro the Infiltrator, 2 mana, 2, 3. Whenever it or one more non-token creatures in his battlefield under control, if none of them are cast or no mana was spent to cast them, draw a card. So if you have Satoro in play and you evoke an incarnation, you draw a card, kind of like up the beanstalk. If you ephemerate a creature in play, you draw a card when ephemerate resolves, you draw a card when ephemerate rebounds. If you persist a creature, you draw a card. Um... If you put a Cryptic Coat into play with Satoro, you draw a card. Stoneforge is also kind of extra nice in this deck with the subtleties where Stoneforge... I, Stoneforge Mystic is basically a blue card for the purposes of pitching to, to subtlety where it to, can tutor... It will always tutor a blue card to your hand. I have the Cauldron on the sideboard for this list. Since I'm thinking that you're going to pitch the Cryptic Coat to subtlety enough, a lot of time, I think you really want the second copy to be able to, um, to have and start triggering Satoro. I think that that is... Uh, that is pretty important. Uh, we also have Troll of Kazadoom to have a density of Black Hearts for Grief. We have 16 Black Hearts for Grief. Um, and also persisting a troll is kind of one of the main ways we're pushing like real damage through. So like a lot of little weird aspects to this deck, but play a lot of busted cards. And also uh, we also get to play Assimilation Aegis. Nice that it's a white card for Solitude too. That's tutorable off Stoneforge Mystic. Um, but it's like a tutorable O-Ring. Uh, <laughs> only for creatures, but you can like copy the creature. I'm I'm excited to like play and see how see how this goes. Uh, kind of generally also with the sideboard, we've got mole drifters in the main, and then in like the more interactive matchups, we're usually going to cut our tide binders for mole drifters. Is something that I think is kind of nice. Um, yeah, I think let's just go ahead and get going. We have two surveil lands. They're both black for troll of Kazadoom. and here we have a turn two Satora with subtlety up. When he maybe take the back streets and then get a basic island. It's probably not nonsense, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah I don't know. I... Okay. <laughs> not nonsense. Sorry. Okay, very nice to have four subtleties in my main deck here. Let's go to keep land number three. Remember, we do get to draw a card off the Cryptic Coat. I'm going to use the Hallowed Fountain this turn, I think, also... Bridget with the Twitch Prime. Thank you. Welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Second amulet. Pretty scary. Do they have a copy of the One Ring on turn two? That would be bad for me. Would I subtlety a Dryad of the Elysian Grove here? I'm not sure. They do have a turn two One Ring. Glad to see that this deck is still uh, doing its thing. Um, let's see what we draw. So I guess we'll be pitching that to Subtlety as soon as that happens. I'm going to go ahead and play my Cryptic Coat so I have as much pressure as possible. And we do, when we cloak, we should get to draw a card assuming Magic Online is not bugged. And we draw a second copy of Subtlety. That is, that is pretty nice. So despite my opponent having an active one ring, us having two cantripping Subtleties and five evasive... Uh, points of power in play is not so bad. Sawkrat with the seven months. Thank you. Welcome back. Grazer Titan would be worse, wouldn't it? I, mean, I don't know if it would be worse. We have subtlety in our hand. Played someone modern money on this deck yesterday. How close? Do you know how close the list was? Hopefully it's like Summoner's Pact and uh, Titan. Ooh. Two Explorers.
think Satoru will fit in Espergorios. Um, yeah, I think so. To some extent, I wanted to start. I wanted to start with this list, right? Where so th this is tends to be how I like to um, start building around new cards. I like I like to build a list like this that like it maximizes the new card to its highest potential. So this card is playing Persist. We're playing twelve Evoke cards. We're playing four Ephemerates. We're playing Cryptic Coat. And so like the 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 density of like th this amount of cards that works with Satoro, I don't think it's going to get much better than this. So I, I like to see how it performs at like max power level before seeing how this kind of before you know lowering the power level maybe upping the card quality if that makes sense so they do put the titan on top to be expected it's pretty good so i think i should just mole drifter ephemerate the problem is, I suppose, if I don't draw a blue card, we're cooked. What's up? It's me, your friend, aspiring. So if I go Moldrifter, Ephemerate, I draw five cards. I guess it's just a little bit too risky, probably. Yeah, I think we'll just just pass here. It's like it's it just just like having the subtlety up just matters more than anything else does. Based on card is persist. So not one that is helpful to ephemerate. Chances of drawing blue or white card are pretty high. The white card is just not good enough. It, it's like a, a white card to stop Titan turns is just it just it doesn't do as much as it used to. Fortunately, if we hard cast subtlety, we're going to be one damage short of lethal uh, off off of the ring. One from Evoke, two from Satora, one from Ephemerate, two from Subtlety. Wait, how are, how are you counting Subtlety as the card draw when we don't have the, the blue card already? So they're floating two green mana. Why not Evoke, Subtlety, and then Ephemerate? That's what I'm thinking about doing here, but I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that main phase. I think I will do that here. Thought on the card Pest Control. Uh, I'd have to read it again. I don't remember it being a card I was particularly high on. Ooh, nice. So I think I'm just actually going to leave, leave this hardcast subtlety available. Because I think there's a pretty high chance my opponent uh, can cast another Titan here. They just they drew the Titan again. Oh, Pest Control. Uh, yeah, maybe we should be sideboarding some Pest Controls. Forgot about that one. Um, feels like I should be settling the actual thing. Interesting. They just put Castle Garenbrig into play, and then they pass. So, hmm. Maybe I should bounce the coat. Probably not. Should I just cast the subtlety so I can ephemerate it? Is the next deck can come in Magda? I have a Magda deck built, but I don't have Magdas yet. Tough decision. Yeah, we could just cash in the ephemerate to drill to drill two, but the problem is we don't get to attack with the Satoro, which I think I really want to. Maybe the pause gave away third subtlety. Yeah, I I I I think it's it's somewhat telegraphed. I think I'm just gonna untap here. If I draw a land, I can just like I can go hard cast ephemerate then then subtlety, and I can also maybe if I draw a white card, just like cycle the solitude to try to redraw a land. I I don't think we're we're not going to ever just evoke solitude end of turn. I think I drew a tap land. Common with the thirty eight months. Thank you. Welcome back. And notably, I can bounce this to my hand. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna pass. I I almost feel like this being able to pitch to a grief is better than me getting a land. I'm not 100 percent sure. 
Pyrrhal Grief. Just seems a little unnecessary when I just have Subtlety plus Solitude up. All right, three subtleties, good <laughs> good enough to beat the ring drawing 10 cards against Titan. Cast the ring on turn two. It's pretty nice. Some tough decisions that game. So I'm definitely going to bring in these Tide Binders over the Mole Drifters. Copying a Primeval Titan does sound kind of sick. I'm obviously going to bring in the Lori, and I'm obviously going to bring in the Ashiok. I'm going to bring in the sort of Feast and Famine, too. Um... Piece of famine mostly for this matchup in Yogmoth comes in in a couple other spots too, though. I'm gonna cut the fourth copy of Persist, the second copy of Cryptic Coat, and the fourth copy of Solitude. Just shout out the four months. Thank you, welcome back. I think this looks pretty good. Kind of nice that Ashiok pitches to both of these. Obviously, not wanting to pitch it that often. Just any multicolor card is nice, like Satoru and, and Simulation Aegis. Um. Turn one pending is nice. Uh, we can surveil if we don't pending. We have Stoneforge Mystic for Feast and Famine. I, I, I almost feel like this is maybe like... No, I, it's, it's, I think it's always going to be a keep, but it's like the Stoneforge Mystic is better because this is a post-board game because Feast and Famine, I think, is I think is really nice against them. How did Satoru felt? I played one game with Satoru, and it was awesome. It was it was certainly very good that game. Might, nice to draw a Persist or an Ephemerate. So troll trigger if he is a token himself. Uh, I don't know. I think so. Um. Yeah, I think I'm just going to pass this turn and then probably grief then persist. Would Satoru be good in Affinity? I mean, it's not an artifact. This is kind of a big problem for the card. Um, ooh, defense grid. I, I wouldn't be, like, super-duper excited, to be honest, uh, about Satoru and Affinity. Okay, obviously Ashok, really nice tool in this matchup. Let's go ahead and start off by evoking a Grief. Kind of nice that they can't Endurance me either. My opponent has no spells in their hand, which is funny. Titan's always got the... <laughs> Just, they always got your number, I don't know. Um... Always has my number at least. Stoneforge for coat. I'm gonna grab uh sort of feast and famine. Yeah, rest assured they're gonna top deck a Titan. Although they won't they wouldn't actually be able to play it this turn. The couple men didn't be good as pitchables for persist and things doing in stuff. Uh, I don't think so, necessarily. Like, one thing I really like about this deck is that you don't need to play those kind of cards because you don't have, like, big bricks like Archon of Cruelty in your deck. You're Like, you're just persisting Troll, Grief, Stoneforge Mystic, uh, Mole Drifter, Solitude, all these cards that just put themselves in the graveyard naturally. Um, we're also, we also are doing fine on our pitch card count. Uh, you know, it, it can always be a little higher, but... Um, Especially because Stoneforge Mystic can find blue or white pitchables. I think we're doing pretty good. Mending is also, like, just not that good a card, and we already have a lot of two drops, you know. Okay. Nice pickup. I'm going to, you know, take this turn to play an Ashiok. Now, Fran's voice in the back of my head is telling me, never minus this Ashiok. I feel like these builds, like with Mirror Pool, they have like so many, like so much stuff you can snipe. Let's let's not minus it though. Hello, Foxy. Oh, Fox Die Victim. Less less of a cute username than I thought. A <laughs> little, little less cute. <laughs> okay, so this was their draw for turn here. So their hand is Simic Growth Chamber, Besage You, Gruel Turf at the moment. They won't be able to search anything off the saga, but they will be able to get a couple of. Carnstructs. Alright, so this turn let's 
Do I grab Assimilation Aegis here? Or do I grab Coat? I think it's the Coat. What flavor are you Are there multiple flavors? Enlightened Mint. I... <laughs> I I I Esther only ever buys these. I I didn't know there were multiple flavors. Pest control didn't make the cut. I don't know. It's it's like pest control is good against what? It's good against like scales. It's good against uh it's good against <laughs> Um They played the Besaju. They played this. It's good against like hardened scales, it's good against hammer, it's good against asmo. Like, a decks that are, like, more or less irrelevant in the metagame. So we're going to put the coat in so I can smack my opponent with it. Ooh, nice. Amulet's not irrelevant. Is pest, pest control isn't like amazing against amulet. I already have a bunch of prismatic endings. It, it, like pest control is okay in this matchup. I I you know I would I would board it in, but like this isn't like what I wouldn't put it in my sideboard for Titan. I would play more Ashiox, you know. So I don't think it's a super good argument for wanting to play the card. Okay, so the hand right now is just a Simic Growth Chamber. We exile a polluted Delta here. Um, anything else? Not gonna persist my grief, I think. I could just get some extra pressure in play. Is the persist gonna be a lot better than this? I don't know. I think I just bounce the coat that mana. Best control plays from way behind versus amulet. Is there is there way behind versus amulet? You're just dead a lot of the time. <laughs> Maybe there is. Again, if I had it in my sideboard, I would board it in in this matchup. I already have, like, a super comprehensive sideboard plan for the matchup with Ashiok and Tidebinder and Lorien, sort of Feast and Famine, four main deck subtlety. Um, like, I, for me, I'm not going to put Pest Control in my sideboard, I think, unless I'm trying to target, like, Scales and Hammer and Asmo decks. Like, enough at the moment. Okay, so we're going to play against Selfie. Persist in the draw step ephemerate grief. They still have the defense grid in play, right? Or I don't think I got rid of it. So I don't have a blue white surveil land, so I'm just gonna grab blue black. But yeah, you, you could play Pest Control in uh, in this list, of course. Third of two, three amulet play, it's good. I don't... It, is it, though? Because usually, like, if they have tur two or three amulets in play, they've played one or two of them that turn, and you're dead before you ever get to untap with your Sorcery Speed Sweeper. Obviously, so, obviously, if you can kill three amulets with it, hooray. But how often does it actually happen? Sorry, your Phoenix listen is this section. section. you think it has, it has a place in the deck? I don't think so. I think in those builds of Phoenix, you just want to be like com almost completely resilient to creature removal, playing just Phoenix and Demi Lich. But you could play Slickshot maybe in a more aggressive, like aggressive build. Kerbos too much, appreciate you. Yeah, it does feel way longer, huh? <laughs> Getting stuff now. I think okay, yeah. If I don't know if, how much more I'll need for today, but maybe just message me what you get. Strict with 31. Sky BK I Josh. Oh, excuse me. I think we switch prime. Wrench mind, huh? Okay. Keeping that one on top. Line splash is not a playable card, unfortunately. Uh, Cryptic coat also triggers. Um, Satoro. Every single time it comes into play. Okay. Imagine another wrench mind here. So I think I'll go ahead and subtlety this. They pitched a not dead after all. Could just mean they have another one, of course. My opponent is floating a black mana in response here. 
Not really sure what that's about. I was just floating for the Mirac, I see. Uh, I think we do have a lot of card advantage in the deck. So we top deck divination against the Rinchbine deck. Uh, they need to put the grief on the bottom. Nice. Two pretty reasonable draws. One card left in hand. It's a little Leon of the Veil. Vale. It's pretty good. Um, guess we discard Stoneforge Mystic. And take one, two down to 14. And then we'll play the, the Coat. There's a Solitude here. So if I flip that Solitude, then I'm going to be gaining a good amount of life. My opponent may uh, edict me here, though. Top decks Needle to name the coat, and then probably Edicts the Why Moldrifter, and then Triggers to Toro. We have enough things that Triggers to Toro. Moldrifter is a very good card in your deck with four Persist and four Ephemerate. Also, we need blue card count for subtlety. So it does name the coat. Big top deck for me. I'm down to 11 here. I draw another copy of Satoro, the Infiltrator. Best draw is more Moldrifter, more Persist. This seemed like opponent was bluffing with the, the grief there. It's always so tough to play around. So persist, mold drifter. Um just thinking here, is it gonna be better for me to deploy this? The top deck needle was also just so good. Uh deploy this to race or hold to get out from underneath the rack. It's just so tough because there's you know obviously so many of the cards are discard cards. So if I play it, I go to five versus six, then five. Let's hold it. Fetch is an upkeep. Plays a swamp. So we're going to take two down to six. Hold this fountain. Down to five. Um, yeah, I think I'm just going to get the assimilation, Aegis, since the coat is needled. That makes sense. I'm just going to hold all these cards in my hand, too, for the rack. Okay, so going down to four. So they took my assimilation, Aegis. I think I'll um, cast the Grief this time. It's kind of nice to just have lands in hand since they... Can't be discarded with, like, Thoughtseize. Can't be discarded by Liliana. Fox <laughs> the Twitch Prime. Fox die victim with Twitch Prime. GM with the three months. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, okay. Let's very much hope that my opponent did not top deck a copy of Orcish Bowmasters as I try to persist my Mold Drifter. Seems like they didn't. Do I want to fetch a Plains and Pending something? Seems okay. I think I can. Being two versus one isn't that different. And I'm going to Pending the. Um, the needle instead of the rack, and then I can bounce the coat to my hand to be above the rack limit here. One's hand is Urborg, two mystery cards. One of the mystery cards is a very dangerous Dothy Voidwalker. Great draw for selfie. Need a top deck. Yeah, right on time. Tough. So down a game against the Mono Black Saga rack. If I keep being in these Mold Drifters. Cosk with 25 months. Thank you. Welcome back. Mm. I'll play Cauldra over Aegis, I think. Cauldra's pretty good. Maybe I maybe I just do want more removal for like Voidwalker. I'm not sure. 
I'm gonna cut like the fourth subtlety for at least the first push. Probably want Lauren. Yeah. I think so. Top of every card seems pretty good. Good place to be, I guess. Okay, let's try this. I'm going to say the Beanstalk reference, but it's just not. I mean, <laughs> in a lot of ways, Satoru is better than Beanstalk. It works off of Ephemerating. In, the, in this deck, it works every time you resolve Ephemerate, every time you Cryptic Coat, every time you Persist, you also get a trigger. Beanstalk would only trigger, also triggers off Grief. Means, <laughs> being, you know, I, this is a pretty different list, but it's pretty very similar to Beanstalk and has some disadvantages and some advantages. Let me keep this uh, 7 on the play. Grief over subtlety on the play. It's kind of just I feel like we want our top decks to be good, is is my thinking. Is do you have um any any more than just <laughs> do this spike? Any what is your uh thought process there? Okay, I'm gonna grab Wait, did I not bring in the cauldra? I oh, I totally thought I did. Okay, I'm gonna grab a second coat, I guess. Code does seem pretty good against them. Mishra's Factory. Okay, so I'm going to go grab Island, then I'm going to go play this in case I draw Ephemerate. Did not draw ephemerate. Remember, uh, the coat also triggers Satoru. Let's see if the Satoru lives, though. Getting Liliana. Don't think I should prioritize double white four. Solitude super duper hard here. Um, kind of a tough call. I think I think I am just supposed to play Hardcast Grief. Take the Bowmasters. Discard one of my my second coat. Discard and Dying Evil. Play Swamp. Well, I guess that's our new plan for this turn. And it shouldn't be able to save Liliana. Could Ephemerate to save our grief here and take the other Undying effect, but... Ephemerating Moldrifter probably can't be too bad a decision here. If Satoru is the draw, and what's the point of Moldrifter? Moldrifter is good in your Ephemerate Persist deck. It's kind of the simple thing. Uh, and we need a density of blue cards for subtlety. <laughs> Not every single card needs to work with Satoru for uh, you to want to, you know, <laughs> for you to uh, want to put it in your deck. But, uh, but it's also, we, we like really desperately need those four extra blue cards for subtlety. And like Moldrifter is just in your Persist uh, a persist ephemerate deck, like a card you really want to play four copies of, I think. Too much dirtling. Thank you, thank you for the feedback. I am noting it. Drawing a lot of cards off Bolt Drifter is pretty okay, though, in a deck with twelve pitch cards. I believe. Okay, go to game three. I'm going to cut all the griefs on the draw. Like three pushes. 
with the pushes, I think I can afford to play Cauldra. I kind of want one hearse. But how do you win? You reduce your opponent's life total to zero. You can, you know, persist Troll of Kaza Doom. You can Cryptic Coat them. You can attack with your 2-3 minutes. You're going to attack with them. I think about just, again, think about the first hearse. My opponent also tutored. My opponent tutored Nile Spellbomb. So maybe I want to get a, get away from the persists. I don't... I, I guess I'm bringing in the, the pushes as extra black cards. So I could do something like this. I could also just like not play the hearse and just play War Griefs on the draw here. 14 black cards is kind of low. Griefs not that good of a top deck. What if we do this? First tie binders. Okay, I'm going to play two tie binders. Good against Saga, they are playing fetch lands. Good against Liliana. Hmm. Again, matchup tough to mulligan in. Let's keep our, keep our seven. So Forge is also pretty good against them, I think. Nice top deck. This path decks are worse than push. Path deck, it doesn't matter if it, it is worse, but you don't need to even think about path to exile when you're thinking about what modern cards you might put in your deck. Path to exile isn't one that should come to your brain. It isn't a playable modern card. There's better options in basically every deck, including this one. It's um, yeah, just again, the, I think not not the question you should be asking. <laughs> Do you think I'm just going to hold the Prismatic Ending? But it, can, it can pitch to Solitude. It can get rid of like a Liliana. Just seemed enough better than the average top deck to keep here. Zab with a 13. Thank you. Welcome back. Path is good versus Tron. It, this is not, it's not true. <laughs> it's not true. <laughs> okay. Nice to have two answers to this grief because we have both push and evoke Solitude. So we don't need to do anything here. Interesting to take the fatal push. And I, I feel like my opponent was I thought my opponent was just gonna like make a saga token and not and not walk into this. I guess it's okay. It get, gets two cards out of the hand, right? I was gonna fetch that planes also, which is kind of funny. Mold Drifter's uh not the worst. Cloak target here. Do we have pest? I don't have pest control in the cyber. Obviously, it'll be insane against my opponent. Maybe we should have some copies. To me, it's like just not that interesting of a card. It's like it's just a cyborg card that's good when it's good, and I don't feel like it's amazing at the moment. But we should, we should maybe have a couple. Assuming my opponent's getting Nile spell bomb. If they want to scam the grief, you need to push. Uh, yeah, 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 for sure. I just kind of thought my opponent would take coat and then make a saga token, seeing that I just had all removal. But this, this seemed like a fine line too. Um, opponent is deep in the tank. I'm gonna go. Okay, so my opponent has needled Cryptic Coat and then played another copy of Urza Saga. The second part, of, copy of Urza Saga part of this equation is pretty tough for me. Uh, I draw a Mold Drifter. Imagine finding Ephemerate here. So I'm certainly going to Prismatic Ending right now. I think I'm just going to pending the token, the construct. Okay, so opponent passes, pings me for one. 
We did it. We drew Ephemerate. Holy shit. Um, so I guess I do want to hit my land drop. So let's go. Stoneforge for Cauldra. Swamp Cycle. Grab Godless Shrine, play it tapped. Then my opponent will make a construct, and then I'll ephemerate my Mole Drifter. Although I guess I don't have to do that now. Since it has Cloak, it should be exceptionally difficult to deal with. And, and I'm certainly expecting my opponent's just going to make another Saga token almost all the time here. Not this time, though. Might block with the Stoneforge and Ephemerate, we'll see. Does my opponent have two Pithy Needles? I guess that's a big question to be asking ourselves here. Does have another copy of the rack. Kicks a Turok. Turok, pretty scary here. Well, I guess I could have played towards uh, drawing Subtlety Blue card. Now probably okay to just chump. Oh no, the rack comes down before my ephemerate does. Dang. <sighs> yeah, maybe we'll add some pest controls, huh? So I guess I'm gonna pending this construct. With the intention to play hearse and get the hearse big enough to where I'm able to block the Turok. Dang. Okay, it seems like the main way I could win this game is top decking an ephemerate for the Mole Drifter into multiple things, so let's uh, let's play towards that. Pending the needle, bounce cut, replay cut, be able to trade with Turok. Couldn't do it, couldn't do all that this turn. Uh, I did think about pinning the needle, but then they also have like the Mistress Factory, I think would be too far behind on board. Seemed like I needed to impact the, the game here. All right, step one. You draw like Solitude. <laughs> I think I think I just can't quite stabilize, right? I'm just thinking about doing something. They like cast a grief or Kick another Turok we could get there. Wow. So I have to push the Voidwalker, but we are actually alive here. But we'll get to cast a Mole Drifter. We can feel the power. This is pretty exciting. The Urborg is also really nice for me here. Yeah, I would, I would, have, I would have died to a uh, factory attack, but you know they don't always play correct, or you know, yeah, I have, I have a ton of cards in my hand. Way they're attacking, this has got to be wrong. Maybe they have another Turok in their hand. Just takes so much pressure off me to like get to make this trade right now. <sighs> okay, so I'm going to one. I take exactly zero off the rack. If I had one less card in hand, I wouldn't. This is a super exciting game. I'm gonna draw five new cards here. So let's not fuck this up. I'm gonna I think I'm basically always 
black. We're playing Satoru first. I'm just trying to think. I'm going to evoke subtlety and I'm going to push this grieve. I guess let's. Seems kind of wild to. I guess I should. Maybe I should just evoke Moldrifter. Yeah, let's just evoke Moldrifter. So we still need to keep a bunch of cards in our hand. Oh, maybe my opponent would play into it. Just pushing out. I don't have Revolt, do I? Oh, I do have Revolt. Sorry. Thought I didn't have Revolt. Okay. So was, we should be pretty safe. It certainly feels as though we've turned the corner. No doubt about Master. Kind of tough to die with Bowmaster the moment. Yeah, so I was thinking I wanted to turn on Revolt, but yeah, the, I forgot the Ephemerates turned on the Revolt. Fatal Push Satoru. Wild game. Thank you, Urborg. So I will have to evoke the subtlety to stop the uh, Void Walker. And what I think I may do is Tidebind both copies of the rack so I can just have like lethal in play next turn. Yeah, because all they're doing this next turn is going to cast another copy of Dothy Voidwalker. Oh. Yeah, I guess sorry, if they. Oh, I, I can't tie bind if they're undying. Oh, they, they wouldn't want to undying because it's my card, anyways. Yeah. Um, seems like I should do this. It's like a little risky, but they're just drawing Voidwalker this turn, and it seems like. This is targeting this one. Seems like I'll just have them dead. Let's attack for five. They can't factory and Voidwalker unless they've been sandbagging and land this whole time, which I don't think would make a lot of sense. No, what are we knowing? Oh, I'm just dead to the, the factory attack. Fuck. What's up, game? Let me miss it. It's a weird interaction. Well played. Why put yourself in that position? Come on, chat. I, I made I'm making a mistake on stream. What do you mean? Oh, why put yourself in that position? Shut up. <laughs> this is a very, very difficult game. I can't pick up cloak. There's a needle on cloak. Alright, GG. <laughs> why put yourself in that position? I chat, please. <laughs> this is a super tough game. <laughs> the greed. I don't know about greed. It's just like it's just combat mistake at the end of like a very super complicated game. Why can't I block the factory? So, so I can block the factory. But the problem is if I block the factory, the rack uh, will have its abilities again and I'll take one damage in my upkeep and lose. Pretty good chance I'm waiting on Satoru till turn three to have Ephemerate up. Assuming it's still in my hand, I guess. Yeah, yeah, Pona, I think, made a mistake casting the Grief instead of attacking the factory that the one turn that we tried to capitalize on that. Jop with the seven months. Thank you. Welcome back. Pretty excited to play with this. Maybe if they, like, cast a Voidwalker here. Going to be able to just back-to-back Harkest -back Subtlety. Yeah, I think, I, I, think, I think that was also a mistake. I think I should have been able to... I should have evoked the, the Ball Drifter... Instead, I agree on that one, too.
Let the first track trick resolve the tie binder second one. So we still have tie binder up. I just wanted as much power and toughness in play for next turn. I don't know. I, it, the game was winnable for sure, and I made a mistake. I apologize. It was a good game. They know I have this ephemerate. They take the cryptic coat. So we're going to go ahead and cash in this ephemerate for another copy of, clo of uh, coat here. They got two cards in their hand. My top card is a subtlety. I guess I I I, I do just want to be able to bounce coat and replay it. So I'll shock so I can just get this basic swamp here. Thoughts on Fortunity, more equipment to make it worth. Ooh, opponent's also Satoroing. Um I mean Forgenu is like it's good good in hammer. <laughs> Uh, so I, I don't feel like it's lacking a ton to make it work, but these kind of strategies are fragile. Ooh, I surveilled the swamp into my yard earlier. So first time casting Assimilation Aegis, a card that I've been like really excited to play and see like how how well does this copy ability actually play, and it kind of looks like it's going to end up playing very well here. Wait, is this bugged? Why is this? Shouldn't this, shouldn't my cloak be a Satoro? It's still a face down card. Is it, is it not supposed to be a Satoro now? No, it's kind of a weird interaction. If I flip the subtlety, does it become a Satoro? It's not a creature. Why is it? Why isn't this a creature? Okay, so when it's flipped is when it's a creature. I'm kind of just running into Fatal Push, but I mostly just want to play test and see how this works. They could have, they could have pushed anyways. Think it's a Moto Bug? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. The Cloak Creature is definitely a creature. I mean, I would think so. It's got power and toughness, but it is a weird interaction. Yeah, I think, I think it's just good to, <laughs> to see what's up. Um, I guess I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to. I'm supposed to cast Stoneforge first, then equip onto the Aegis, and then cast the Coat, and I get. I get to draw a card if that resolves. And then if they have a counter spell, I would rather them counter this instead. Being a copy doesn't need to show Satoru since it's already a cloak creature. It's very confusing. <laughs> we got two cards in their hand. Does the creature coat create face down? Yes, if you have a Satoru in play and you Cryptic Coat, you get to draw a card. Which is a part of the reason why we're playing it in this deck. So we'll bounce this before Tidebinder turns away its abilities. Did it cost two or four to flip? Uh, four. Yeah, so is this... Like, this is a trigger that should be turning this into a Satoro. Just so confusing. If you draw a land, you can play both of these this turn. They got two cards in their hand. They're also at two life. Don't have any more basics to fetch. It is Satoru currently. Is it? Like, it, maybe, wait. Is it? <laughs> I don't... It, it's, it, it, it is a Satoru, but face down?
Okay, very, very odd interaction. Turn over. It's not letting me turn it over. You can, yeah, yeah, not letting me at the moment. Um, seems like I should just bounce and replay. Wait, I think I'm just punting because, oh fuck, I don't have another fetchable. I thought I had one more. Okay, just punting for sure. <laughs> Although I guess I wasn't able to do do anything else this turn because I I couldn't hard cast solitude. I'm not dead on board here. They have one card in their hand. The Shodati showed us face down Satoru. I think it was just still the cloak, and then I turned it up, and then it turned into Satoru. My opponent concedes, which is a little confusing because this doesn't have unblockable. Maybe they thought it did, or maybe they thought it had menace from Satoru. Maybe it shows as having menace <laughs> on their side. I don't know. Very odd. Menace attack with Satoru. I I don't know. It's just like. Like, visually speak... Okay, so I think push is going to be better than pending. Don't really like pending too much here. They have Satoru in their deck too, so they're maybe playing like a Demir scam build. Let me look at my... So I started to build it. I haven't built the mana base. Cyborg's coming off of a different deck. Um... They're playing Tidebinder. I still have a few more slots too. They're probably playing something like this if they're because they they also have Satoru. So I think I need I need these hearses. Their deck must be full of like undying effects. Um. Let's 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 maybe leave the culture. Let's leave the culture at home. I'm gonna trim a Drifter and a Persist and quick submit. Is tucking Satoru? That, that was it. Was my opponent Satoru? Was not mine? I, I, I just mostly think the card is like a generically good card to play in this archetype is why we have it in the deck. Not too complicated. Yeah, we still drown. So, so if they have drown, they probably don't have... Um, if they have drown, they probably don't have Dothy Voidwalker. Because um, like I, I was thinking in, when I was building the deck that I wanted to play Dothy Voidwalker because it can trigger Satoru if you cast a creature off of it. Um, and it's also like, also it's a good card to scam and trigger Satoru, but you can't really play this and drown in the lock in the same deck, I think. No Essence Flux. Um, yeah, maybe Essence Flux is better than Undying Evil. I, I also do, I, I have a lack of blue cards, so I'm actually, actually, Essence Flux is actually just, it's just going to be better than Not Dead After All. Good upgrade. Again, this one is still pretty... Work in progress, of course. I think I have like, yeah. This is this has got to be better. Also, have persist package. Yeah, I don't know. You could play persist package. I feel like you, in the blue in this build, you don't want it, but I don't know. Not one hundred percent sure. It's still all so new. Can okay, you get blue black surveil land here? Flux is good with time binder. Yeah, yeah. So maybe maybe some time binder is good in there because we're. I, I was also like looking into lists and like the biggest thing was blue cards and so essence flux and time binder do solve that a lot. I don't know if I want to play four, of course. Um, card seems better than the average draw. I think this turn though, I'm just gonna swamp cycle and get a shadowy backstreet instead of just playing Satoru into easy interaction. Any white card helps us out a lot, but also. Uh, if it reads like we're super duper good here. Do enough crime for Forsaken Miner? Uh, I don't think this deck is very interested in like it's Forsaken Miner. I know it's, it's it with a Toro, but the actual effect of the card just being like 2 2 is a little dopey. Why not Falahi over Muldrifter? We don't have enough non creatures in this deck. In fact, it's not even close. Y'all are Muldrifter haters, I guess. Muldrifter rules, I think, in this deck. It's, like, so good with Persist. Can be a little slow, but... Yeah, we, we are way, way too far away from non-creature heads. It's, like... 
We have 14. We need like 26, something like that. 24, 5 maybe. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll play the, the Norn build. Yeah, I feel like every other Twitch chat. Surely chatters are going crazy for Moldrifter. Not here though. Which is good. I like the I do like the pushback. Okay, a lot of options here. We can just cast persist. We can just evoke grief. Let's just evoke grief. Well, no, I think subtlety's no, I think we'll play around subtlety. Okay, so drawing a card. So I think I just ephemerate the Satoro here. Would Satoro be playable in Reanimator? Yeah, uh, yeah, I I I, I kind of like it in this shell where you don't have to fill your card, your deck up with like duds, like Archon and like looting effects, but yeah, you could, you could obviously play it in the, the in those shells. Let me just target Satoro here. Okay, we're going off. Um, not hard cast grief. The the coat also triggers triggers Satoro. Yeah, not too surprised that this card is here. Let me bottom attack for five. I think I'm just going to main phase ephemerate the troll. Draw a card, get the minus one counter off. And then if I draw a white card, then I'll probably evoke the solitude. Pushes. Okay. Uh, Sin Cinema Joe. Cool. Thank you for the uh, the gifted sub. Very nice view. Uh, Apple, make sure to thank Cinnamon Joe. Two cards in my opponent's hand. So we're going to target Satoru again. Do have Revolt now. Um, let me cast the coat. See if we draw a white card or a land. And also Cinnamon Joe subscribing. Very cool. Thank you. Then we could persist subtlety. Let's just see how this attack goes. How about 14? Let's keep the pressure going. Let's keep the cards flowing. Two mana, two, two flyer ain't too bad. <laughs> Illuminati Hottie. Great username. Think of the four months. Appreciate you. Two and one. Mm. Keep, I guess. Yeah, coat triggers to Toro. You didn't cast the cloak token, and it's a non-creature, non-token creature. Okay, opponents on a mulligan to five. Yeah, this is the first league. Punted match two, super close one against Selfie. Yeah, just everything triggers it. Card is the Toro's looked really good so far. Satora, Blood Marine, Marauder, Rhinos. <laughs> the Rhinos don't trigger Satora because it's been on token. Up against the Mill. I had Emrakul in some decks. <laughs> Want to keep in the... <laughs> the one land fetch land on the play. Can't be doing that, opponent. This match was probably horrendous. We're probably also getting uh, Archive Trapped. I'm just going to leave this on top because I think we're getting Archive Trapped. It also pitches the subtlety, I guess. Do you have two? Do you have a surgical extraction? I don't know what drawing cards is doing the infiltration. I think it's ninja, right? The ninja two trolls cards. A surgical stone forge mystic. Thank you for your opponent for not ghosting. Change my name to Cinnamon Joe. Hell yeah. <laughs> Uh, they leave the stone forges in my yard, which may come back to bite them if I top deck a persist. My opponent. Still not done. You know, opponent, you, usually when people miss their second land drop, they don't take this many game actions. You have a second surgical? 
Also, wait, didn't they? I thought they spent mana on the surgical. Maybe that's what they're looking at. I, I thought they spent mana on it. Opponent, you can mulligan one landers. I mean, they had like archive trap, surgical, surveil. Maybe it's okay. Um, let's attack for two. Do I just cycle a solitude here? Seems probably not optimal. Can you beat me with a deck that draws 20 cards like this? Uh, it seems to be easier if my opponent keeps one lander. Well, here's their second land. I, I don't think this matchup is good. <laughs> For whatever that's worth. They're bringing the Tide Binders over the Mole Drifters post board. Gonna bring in the Cauldra. I might bring in the Feast and Famine. Persist on a troll would uh, put a lot of pressure on my opponent. Wondering if artifactless scales is possible. I'm definitely looking at it. I like I like the landfall counter creature. And then I've I've had like I've had like a very rough draft of one of these decks um, built for a while that's kind of built around Gyre Sage and built around um, Incubation Druid, like making a lot of mana. And if they die, you can Cauldron Gyre Sage and Cauldron Druid. And never really felt like I had a super functional build of the, that idea. But I do think that this card is like a step in the right direction of like art, like a non artifact scales deck. So, am I going to persist the troll or am I going to persist Quack Attacks? Three months. Thank you. Welcome back. Or do I persist Stoneforge Mystic and get Cryptic Coat and cast Cryptic Coat? My opponent's already used two Drown of the Locks. Uh, I have not seen the new animated frames, no. Forgot I wasn't YouTube lurking. <laughs> Thank you for dropping the sub, Quack. So attack for five, attack for eight, solitude attack for eight. Glimpse me down to 20. One card left in their hand at this point. NRW with the 5-pack. Thank you so much. You got to give this up from NRW. Make sure to thank them. NRW's been around a long-ass time. Opponent getting smacked down to seven life points. How do you feel about that landed mill? I don't know. The thing about magic is there's a hopefully this is a Tasha's. Okay, fractured sanity doesn't kill me. Um, think about like the way magic is at the moment. There's so many like colorless utility lands you could be playing. Like I don't know that this is better than like demolition field. Like I, I, I like every every mill deck basically plays like four field of ruin, zero demolition field because your opponent can choose to not surge off demolition field. But how often are they actually doing that? And if if they are actually doing that to play around archive trap, isn't that kind of like okay? So I don't know. But at, at least at least I don't feel like that card is like particularly bad. You know what I mean? I just don't know if it's there's but there, there's a, there's a big difference between maybe not particularly bad and a good enough card to put in your modern deck. But it could be. Something like this, I think, is what we're going to do post-board. Do I want hearse? Hearse seems okay. Maybe we play the hearses and we're at, like, 62 post-board. You can instant speed kill with it. Yeah, I guess I just don't know how, how important that is, you know? But maybe, maybe it is important. I don't know. Yeah, but certainly something. Beanstalk pushed good deck. I probably should have boarded out the Aegis. Beanstalk pushed good decks over the edge. Rotoro fits into new decks and has way better brew potential. Yeah, I think I think so. It's like to some extent, like your card draw engine just being a two mana creature. It has like it's such a it's a much safer card than <laughs> up the Beanstalk ever was. Um, and I agree, the brew potential seems really really high. Uh, I'm gonna do my best to not put a card in my yard and turn on Drown because Hearse is going to. Eliminate Drown. Obviously, they may just have Archive Trap. 
think Thrasta with stuff like Hidden Herbus, Burning Tree Emissary, Infernal Plunge could work. Uh, I've played some Thrasta decks. Uh, I think that the best way to do it is like in a Prowess build, um, where it like got shot at Mutagenic Growth, end up being like way more castable cards for you. Um, I think if Thrasta cost one less mana, it would be a really good modern card, and it, it, it just cost, I think, like one too many mana, where you have to cast I think that's four spells for it to be two mana, uh, which is just it's just a little too a little too rough, I think. I do think it's close. So we're gonna cast this. Fair enough. How's Aegis been? Um, I think the card has got to be good in the deck, right? Like, it pitches to Solitude, it pitches to Subtlety, it's tutorable removal off Stoneforge Mystic. Um, and then the cop, the thing the thing about, though, is the like, if that's all it was, I'd be like, yes, this card is worth playing in this deck. But it, it also has all of this extra text on it that, for me, has been hard to evaluate. Like, I... Like, how relevant is the copy whatever creature you exiled ability? And we actually exiled a Satoru with it, and we tried to equip it to Cloaks, and then it, like, it didn't really work. So, uh, so that is, like, still kind of to be determined, I guess. I'm going to encounter their, their draw here. I'm going to fetch also, reduce the chance of Archive Trap. I asked the judge, and the Aegis Code situation is correct. Thanks, copying layers. So so unintuitive. Thank you, judges. Could ephemerate this to stop the crab. I think it's likely going to be better to use Fatal Push. And then I want to start exiling creatures in my graveyard because of Crypt Incursion, but I want to keep at least one good thing to persist, if that makes sense. So I'll just exile... Subtlety and keep solitude in my yard to persist. I guess I would also have this troll. Um, and then I don't want to push right now. I may want to just assimilation Aegis. Actually, let me let me cycle this troll. But if I if I push now, I turn on I turn on uh, fatal push for my opponent. Baleful mastery. Well, we get to draw a card, I guess. What's wrong with? No surgical, please. Yeah, I just have enough removal in my hand, I think, to go for this. Should be Satoru face down, meaning you can pay two to flip. Okay, so that, that part of the interaction is bugged, I guess. What are you persisting except trolls? Solitude Grief uh, and Moldrifter and Stoneforge Mystic. But besides that, nothing. Not today, mill opponent. Upgrade this into a 6-5. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to turn that face up next turn. Harvester of Misery in the Persist Shell. I'll, I'll need to reread it. Again, I am still just don't have a lot of the names memorized. Oh, I don't know. This card's pretty boring, I think. The the Living End, like, this card. It, it, it could be... You could play it on 75. I, I, I don't feel like the effect is necessarily particularly well-positioned as a problem, but... Oh, not that into it. Okay, we're gonna win. We're gonna flip over the uh, the troll here. So this has got to be an achievement to unlock. Uncloaking a troll of Kazadoom. Now it now it really can't be blocked. <laughs> so let's get a four one prediction going on our first league of the day. Could have been playing for a 5-0 if I played a little tighter. That was such a tough game against Selfie.
Oh, no. Hmm, let me get the Aegis here. So no more surveillance for me, I guess. I'm gonna grab cloak first because I want to be able to subtlety. Does that make sense? But I want to pitch the Aegis if I can't help it. Kind of nice that, you know, Stoneforge acts like a, a blue card in these situations. They do put the Stoneforge on top. So let's just let this go. It's got an MGD and apparently Oko's a cowboy now. <laughs> it seems that way. Opponent decides to not get in with their hammer here, which I certainly won't complain about. I think that they're just a little too worried about this assimilation Aegis, which does make a lot of sense. If we draw land, we'll have a million options. Seems like playing this can't be that bad. College side's interesting. Yeah, I just didn't want a fourth equipment in the main, and I wanted the second cloak more than I wanted the um first cauldra since we are sorry <laughs> uh, since we are wanting to pitch the first copy to cloak to subtlety enough of the time all right so I'm gonna try to jump blocking no shadow spear no problem they could have had a Shadow Spear. They could have had a Cauldre also. But instead, they wisely go for their own copy of, a copy of Cryptic Coat. Um, so here, I'm going to grab my second copy of, <laughs> of Cloak, which is going to start triggering Satoro also. And I'm just going to Prismatic Ending the Hammer, or try to at least. Failing to. I'm going to attack with Satoro, right? That's Menace. Satoro's been really good. It's our first league with it, but I've, I've definitely felt like the card is very strong. Of course, I usually feel like this when I build a deck like this, that like this, this is our first Satoru draft, right? And I've, we have four ephemerates, four persist, all 12 incarnations. We have cryptic coat. Like the deck is certainly, certainly it should be good here. You know what I mean? Okay. I guess we are going to lose to another hammer. Okay. Going to game two, drew the wrong two incarnations, I guess. Feeling pretty good about our chances to win both cyborg games, though. Even without any pesty pest controls on our sideboard. Um, we didn't show them any persists. I think I'm going to cut the subtleties in this matchup. I'm going to cut one of the cloaks for Cauldra. And I'm going to cut the Mold Drifters for Tidebinders. Which is something you'll do somewhat often, I think. Well, maybe these persists are a lot worse with me cutting the Muldrifters. Could, could play like one Muldrifter, three persist. What matches am I targeting with Lauren? Uh, I definitely want it for Titan, and then it comes in. And also, in any matchups where you want to disenchant any Urza Saga matchup, you want the first Lauren. <laughs> yeah, so Toro and Bean together would have been awesome. Satoru so Ninja Scam waiting room. I, I am working on Blue Black Scam. I feel like I'm just not going to play ninjas. The essence flux, flux tech seems like it solves all the issues I had with this. I feel like I'm just going to like play two Tidebinder and play 23 lands. Oh no. With four Preordain, probably don't want to play 23. Probably 21, 22. 
Should I just play more Tide Blinders, maybe? This was from a different sideboard. Uh, I could play Third Thoughtsies. I wasn't 100% sure about some of these numbers. I feel like this looks solid. I could maybe try this next. I, I'm i always, like, so torn uh, during a... Okay, can't can't really mulligan this. I'm always so torn during um new set release weekend to like spin like play to play to play more than one league or not. <laughs> but it does look like something like this could be pretty good. Seems really lean and mean. Another push is probably not something we're putting back. It's like Maybe just a black card to pitch to Satoru. Also, you're going to see the Magdalus. Well, I, I don't have Magdas yet. There's a card availability issue at the moment. You'll see it this week. I'm sorry if you have to wait. I don't know when, though. I can't give you that answer. Yeah, I, I have I have a Magda deck built. I guess I could just show it, even though I don't usually like to do this. Um, it may change a little bit, too, by the time we get to play it. But I think it looks pretty pretty exciting. We've got one Legion Extruder, one Lava Spur Boots. I think this is more of a Boots deck than a Jitte deck. Um... Cauldron also triggers Magda, and the Magda ability is Cauldronable, so I think you want one as a Goblin Engineer tutor target. Pretty in on Engineer. Get Gigantha. I did watch the Eclipse, yeah. I was actually on my 30th birthday. Okay, kind of hard to put this back with the Satoro. Yeah, Skellybag is the, the blue-black Ragavan. We also have actual Ragavan. Um, and then four relics, four baubles, and our burn spells as our crime committers. I, I'm definitely really excited about the Magda deck, but just have to get our hands on Magda. Drag the canal triggers off of and stuff. Um, I thought a little bit about dragging the canal. At the moment, I think I'm kind of just low on it, and I don't think it's very good. So I think we'll just trade this for a Surge. So we get to draw a card. Okay, and that's a tap land that we can't play quite yet. That's okay though. Would Satoru be good in Affinity? I don't I don't know. It's I'm not that excited about it, you know. Like I any of these cards are that are there's like I I don't know, there's there's also the new like synthesizer or whatever. And yes, if you get to like synthesizer then play a bunch of zero drops, it's gonna be good. But does that make Affinity a playable deck? I, I don't I don't really think so. Um But we you know we'll we'll see. I think I'm just pitching the troll now. Another surge. Got no spells in your hand. So Cauldre doesn't trigger Satoru, but it does kind of lock up the board really hard. Um, can also grab Aegis so that I could pitch. That's a Solitude. I think I just already have a white card for Solitude and a push. Is playable, not good, but you could definitely win some matches. I, I we just may have there. You could you could win matches with it for sure, but it, like it's just so far away from being like a selectable tournament deck in my mind. And like 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 it, it also you have to answer: Is Satoru optimal in Affinity? Like it's it's a it's not an artifact. It is also very difficult to cast. That is also this is such a huge problem for Satoru and Affinity. Is it it is not an artifact and it is hard to cast. Huge points against it. Okay, we're gonna go pretty crazy here. Think of Roots with Bombardment Forsaken Miner. Uh, I, I I don't think that you're really ever supposed to be trying to like three card combo like this. Um, or have it be a huge part of your game, deck's game plan. Okay, this is fine. Maybe I want to keep the Lauren. I mean, I have Prismatic Endings to deal with the Needle at some point. Let's just, let's just do this.
He thought Solitude Ephemerate by itself was gross. Let's add some Persist to the mix. So they did needle my Stoneforge Mystic. I think I should probably just flicker the Solitude. Hard to imagine there's really any wrong answer here since... But getting, getting a Cloak would let me draw more cards. <laughs> or not the most necessary. Okay, Persist the Grief. Lost track of how many cards we've drawn off Satoru at this point. Still no spells. Not too surprised to see that. Did I play a land? Like, I thought for sure I played a land. Okay, I played the Swamp. It's like, I thought, like, for sure I played a land, and all of a sudden I started to doubt that. Oop, flooded. No, no, no. I'm not complaining. I still have a fatal push. Is Satoru better than Atraxa being a draw engine for elementals? I mean, one of these is like a two mana creature that you just draw and you cast it for two mana. The other one, you have to Gorios out of your graveyard. So I don't know. I, but I, I <laughs> it's, they're just very different. They're almost incomparable, I think. Goes for Shadow Spear? I guess they're too behind in the race to go for Hammer. Do they top deck a Protection Spell? Does have a Pally. And I don't have any action left, so... We'll see. I guess I'll tr try to trade Satoru for Pure Steel Paladin. Talk with both my Menace creatures here. Um, although, this probably just changes that or my stoneforge mystic is needled yeah i'll, I'll just get i'll just get agus and then have a really good attack here maybe i'm putting myself too cold to top deck hammer this way is the Toro seeming strong yeah i think it's been seeming incredibly strong this league Again, just just the first league, but certainly liked it. So if they draw a hammer off this paladin draw, they could get there. Wow, they did! Holy shit! Yeah, I think I guess I guess I should have gone after the paladin. I mean, hammer code in the. I guess they wouldn't. Have, they would just wouldn't have drawn both. Now they just have a two turn clock and then extra 14 life. So game. Oh, we don't have game three. Wow. So we can, you can draw an ephemerate. We can draw a push. We can draw a prismatic ending. Um, we can probably draw Tidebinder if they move stuff over. I guess they probably won't move stuff over. Yeah. Okay. I think. Both matches we lost this week. We made some displays, but that's okay. It was definitely a good, definitely a good first look for Satoru. Um, I'm <laughs> sorry.